It's time for Raiders Talk of the Nation. I'm your host, Christine Leahy. Thank you for joining us for another episode that is all about the Raiders. After an explosive season opener on Monday Night Football at Allegiant Stadium, the Raiders scored a win on the road against the Steelers, bringing them to a 2-0 start to the season. And while all the guys are showing a lot of hard work on the field, we decided to slow it down and bring it to the mats with one of the NFL's premier playmakers. Darren, I'm Christine. Hi. Nice to meet you. So good to meet you, too. So is that your game the other night, your first home game of the season, fans finally there. What was that like? That was electric. Uh, never been a part of an atmosphere like that. Missed the fans, right? Absolutely. Been too long. So Coach Gruden said some really nice things about you in that game. He's the best player I've ever coached, so I'm going to continue to look for him. You know, he's, he's, he's a hell of a player. He deserves some good looks. What did it mean to you to hear him say that? Uh, I mean, it was crazy at first to... You know, I had to think of who are all the players that he's coached and how many good ones that he's coached, great ones. And uh, for me to be in that category of players just makes me want to lock in more on my day-to-day -day process and just see where it takes me. Okay, so since you're the GOAT, according to Coach Gruden, I have something very cool planned for you. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. You don't know what it is yet. I, but I, I promise it's going to be cool. Okay. Oh. Coming up, we talk music. That was a place for me to really hone my confidence was in music, and I could take that onto the field. Who's better? They Both their styles <laughs> are just, they're different, but I love them both, man. I can't pick one over the other. That's a true good teammate. Football. And being on a team and being around guys and building that bond and being a part of something bigger than yourself. It has to start from a belief within myself for me to go out and do the things that, you know, I have a purpose to do. And the future. I'm more you know, focus on the process because who I'm becoming is more important than the results that may come from it. With one of the NFL's most dominant players. Raiders Talk of the Nation is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, official health partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Discover your inner champ at raiders.com slash champ. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now, only at Allegiant.com. And by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. As one of the top athletes in the NFL, Darren Waller works hard to keep his mind and body in top shape. But we found one activity that had even the soft-spoken Waller kidding around. Do you have any ideas what it might be? Mm, I have no idea. Like when you think goats, like goat. Oh, greatest of all time. Yeah, goats. Baby goats. Ah, okay. And because I know that you love yoga, we're going to do yoga with the goats. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll spread your fingers and your toes directly back behind your knees. Oh, excuse me. And then me. take okay, okay, <laughs> goat parkour already. So we'll take a big breath in, drop your belly, lift your tailbone. And then on your exhale, pull your belly in and round chin to chest. So we'll do a couple more rounds like that. Inhale to pull, pull the belly in, drop it, lift the chin. And then pull the belly in and round chin to chest. Okay, so when is the last time you uh, saw a goat in real life? Mm -hmm. Sweep both arms I think up. I was at one of those like fa animal farms that you just like, drive your car through and you have food. Oh, one of those. Yeah, of course. He was outside, but I was not up close. You didn't go and do yoga with it? No. Drop your belly, inhale. Get some of that seed, yeah. And exhale, round. Get some of that. Send your left leg back. Y'all eating granola? <laughs> they eat a, what is their mixture? Yeah, grapes. Are you guys putting food on our backs? Is that what's no. going on? <laughs> they do it on their own. <laughs> oh, all right. And if you had a, a pet goat, what would you name your goat? We'll take I feel like Billy's too easy. <laughs> I might go for Frederick. Frederick, I like that. Very official. And then on your exhale, hug your elbow to your knee underneath you. And then one more time, inhale, reach everything back out. You are much better at this and the sturdiness <laughs> than I am. Exhale, tap. Now that's my neck, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Slow release, set the right hand down. Don't chew that cord, don't chew that cord. Right don't chew that cord. 
And then again, one more time, interlace the weird thumb on top so you feel it like you're holding someone else's oh, Sorry. So Coach Gruden called you the GOAT, but in your opinion, who is the GOAT past, present for the Raiders? Hmm. Wow, that's tough. A uh, GOAT for the past? Yeah. I might have to go Charles Woodson. <laughs> Oh, Charles Woodson or Tim Brown. Okay. I'm stuck on those two. All right, and present, I know this is going to get you in some hot water, but we're in some hot water right now, or I am currently. <laughs> Present Goat? Yeah. I'm going oh, Derek Carr. That's a good one. It's a good answer, Derek Carr. Maybe we should name, there's a baby goat that needs a name, right? It is a baby goat. It's a girl goat. Derek, 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 Derek. <laughs> Derek, where are you? First one looks, Derek. <laughs> Up next, how hitting rock bottom led Waller to the top of his game. It has to start from a belief within myself for me to go out and do the things that, you know, I have a purpose to do here. So rehab was a big turning point for you, but it sounds like joining the Raiders also turned things around. Yeah, it was uh, an amazing opportunity to, you know, just be myself and become a leader in my own right and just fall back in love with just the day in day out aspect of football. And we check in with correspondent Mark Chinook. We got trumpets, we got drums, let's do this. This segment of Raiders Talk of the Nation has been brought to you by Modelo, a taste that's pure gold, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. What's up everybody, it's your boy Mark Chinook outside Cashman Field. The Las Vegas Lights in action tonight. It is Raiders night. I am so excited to get inside and meet all our fans. Let's go check it out. Let's do this. With alumni Roy Hart, you never know who you're gonna run into <laughs> in Las Vegas. What makes Las Vegas so special? And now that we have Raider Nation home in Vegas, that's gotta feel pretty, pretty special. Of course it does. It's the people that make Las Vegas special. And of course, we have a lot of people that love the Raiders and part of Raider Nation. <laughs> but being here at the Lights FC game, and of course having the Raiders be a part of it, is also extra special. It means that they're in the community like no other. I think I found my home at the Lights game. I'm here with Lucy Fuerza. These guys never miss a Lights game. We got trumpets. We got drums. This guy's rocking the silver and black. There is no better place to be when watching a lights game than right here. How excited are you to get into Allegiant Stadium for the first time? We played a season without fans. Now we get a season with fans. What are you looking forward to the most? Oh, everything. The games, the, the tailgating, everything. The what fans. about you? She said tailgating. You got to like the tailgating. I don't know the tailgating, but I want the touchdowns, baby. I'm touchdowns. Going. Car, did you hear that? He wants touchdowns. Alejandro. Waller, I want touchdowns too. Wow, she called you out, Waller. She just called you out. I've had so much fun at Cashman Field. Very special thank you to the Las Vegas Lights. Raider Rusher, we got cash. You never know who you're gonna run into. If you haven't been to a game, get down to Cashman Field. Big thank you to the Las Vegas Lights for hosting Raiders Night. So much fun. Second and goal just outside the 10. Park zips it in there. It's Waller, he spins into the end zone for the touchdown. Darren Waller continues to rack up some impressive stats on the field, but it's the work he's doing on himself and in the community that holds the most meaning for the star athlete. With a past he doesn't shy away from and a future he looks forward to. Darren, congratulations, four years sober, and I heard that you guys celebrated with your teammates. What'd you guys do? They uh, brought in a $30,000 check toward my foundation just to see you know, how much my teammates and coaches you know, genuinely cared about me and congratulated me. It was an amazing feeling. When you think of Las Vegas, you don't exactly think sobriety. They don't go hand right. in hand. <laughs> um, so what has that transition been like for you to now live here? It's been fun. Uh, it's been great to see you know, how much more there is to the community than just the strip. Uh, from a nature aspect to just 
normal people who live normal lives here that don't even go to the strip just to be welcomed by that community and be here and know that I can you know live my life and be at peace There's so many more positive things I'm a part of now that I'm in this community and uh, it's just grateful to be a part of it. It's a really hard thing and incredible thing what you were able to do especially when you consider that the substance abuse started for you at the age of 15. You were so yeah. young. Yeah. Do you remember exactly what it was? Yeah uh, for me it was pills like pain pills, oxycodones. Um, some of my friends they I started using their in their parents' medicine cabinets and I was just hanging out with them and they were like, you know, this will make you feel good. And at that time, you know, mentally, I was just real down on myself and not really feeling any kind of hope with football or life or anything whatsoever. So I was, you know, quick to try it and, you know, it, it worked for me, it helped me out. It made me f to stop feeling so many things and stop thinking so much, but, um, you know, I didn't know the ride that it was about to take me on. Were you ever at any point concerned about what the consequences could be or how it could affect you with your football career that I'm assuming you were hoping you were going to have? Not really. I mean, the first year in change of me using, my life seemed like it was getting better. You know, I started growing and that gave me opportunities to, you know, play like varsity sports and things like that in high school and just be around people in those friend groups. So it, it seemed like everything was working. And once, you know, consequences started coming, like I got kicked off the basketball team my junior year for something that I did under the influence. But, you know, I was so caught up in how it made me feel that I wouldn't give it up. And my football career in college was going downhill, relationships with family, friends, anyone were just, you know, I was real isolated from those, but I still never stopped to think about giving up my using at all. <laughs> Did you think you were going to make it in the NFL? It wasn't even crossing my mind, honestly. I didn't even think I'd be playing college football. I kind of got, got a scholarship. I was like, well, at least my college will be paid for. And then getting into the NFL, I was just kind of like, I didn't really have any confidence. So I didn't have dreams and goals and aspirations of being one of the best players or being in the position I am today. I just didn't think it was possible. So it, it, it wasn't on my mind. You made it to the NFL and um, it was a pretty rocky start. What was the darkest moment though for you? August 11th, 2017, uh, overdosed in my Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, it was right around the corner from the Ravens practice facility when I was getting ready to be moving out and moving back home with my parents. So it was a time where, you know, not a lot was going on. I was out of the league and I said I was gonna be doing things to turn my life around and I wasn't. And, you know, I just kind of hit a wall full speed and just, you know, but it ended up being a blessing because it made me realize that I'm not really in control and I can't really manipulate things like I thought I could and I really needed help. And that's when rehab came in? Yes, rehab came in and changed the game. You got a job at Sprouts. You know, I know I needed some structure coming out of uh, rehab and while being there, you know, it was, it was tough. The days just, I was like, man, I'm just bagging groceries and I'll see, you know, friends I went to school with or I'll see like girls I used to talk to and it was you know kind of embarrassing a little bit but at the same time it made me like check my pride and my ego and just got me into how I can serve other people no matter what their attitude may be or you know I'm just there to serve them and it just gave me a new perspective. If we fast forward a little bit you're back with the Ravens and Coach Gruden actually saw you there and he said that he wanted you as part of the Raiders organization. What has his support of you over the years done for you both on the field and off the field. He's been very vocal in his support of me from the day that I got there. And he was just saying things that I couldn't really fathom saying to myself about just being great and, you know, taking things to another level. I just couldn't see it that way. He's smart, he's versatile, he's a complete player. He can block, pass, protect. Um, you know, I just, I've never been around a guy that's that unselfish, that talented and that versatile and that complete. Uh, we got to continue to build around him now. We got to get some of our young receivers um, to take pressure off of him. And we, we put some more things in our playbook. We're going to be a lot more demanding of Waller going forward. Him repeatedly saying it, it got me out of my comfort zone and got me to want to start uh, believing in myself from football and, you know, in anything, whether it's me doing music or, you know, just having an impact on the world. You know, just it has to start from a belief within myself for me to go out and do the things that you know, I have a purpose to do here, so he, his support has been a lot to me. So rehab was a big turning point for you, but it sounds like joining the Raiders also turned things around. Yeah, it was uh, an amazing opportunity to, you know, just be myself and become a leader in my own right and just fall back in love with just the day in and day out aspect of football and being on a team and being around guys and just building that bond and being a part of something bigger than yourself. 
On the back of your helmet, you had the quote, inspire change. What makes that quote so important to you? You know, I think people can see me and see that I enjoy my life and I try to live my life to the fullest. And it's possible being sober, it's not, you know, miserable or anything like that. So that may want them to change the way they look at things, ask themselves why they're doing certain things. And uh, if I can get one person to change, who knows how many people they could impact. So it's just passing that gift of change on. You do a lot of work with kids in the community and with your foundation. Is that kind of the message that they, that you hope that they take away from you and their time with you? Yeah, absolutely. That, uh, you know, you don't have to define success or, or happiness off of how anybody else defines it. You can create your own definition and create your own life. And, you know, not only will the results come, but throughout the process of making those results happen, you'll be able to enjoy your life and feel like you're really doing something meaningful. During the game in Pittsburgh, you said that you don't consider yourself just a tight end. I mean, I can see why. But what's your favorite part of the game? I don't know. I get really excited when my, when my teammates make plays. Uh, yeah. You know, when everybody, when it's just like super balanced and, you know, you know, all these guys work so hard. And it's like you see a game where I have like 19 targets and it's like, yeah, it's great for me. It's great for my staff. But it's like I'm with these guys and I really enjoy being around these guys and they work so hard and they deserve opportunities. So to see them get opportunities and maximize those and you know everybody eats it's just it's just an amazing thing coming up more with Raiders Pro Bowl tight end Darren Waller you know I spent a lot of my life just confused and lost and just in a dark place but somehow all those things came together and worked together to provide an avenue for me to walk into this life now you know why I'm here a lot more clearly than I did before so it's like everything all worked together for a purpose even though it was dark and it was you know it was bad. This segment of Raiders Talk of the Nation has been brought to you by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation made to chill. Raiders Talk of the Nation has been brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Las Vegas Raiders. Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. And by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now, only at Allegiant.com. He's one of the biggest players on the Raiders roster with an even bigger story. Something you shared with me before getting deep into the season with the Las Vegas Raiders. You have come so far that you now have a chocolate life-size replica of yourself at the Aria. I have yet to see it. I really need to. Have you seen it yet? I have seen in person. I have seen it in person. What do you think? Great job. I don't know how you. <laughs> Great job. I don't know how you create, put all that chocolate together, and they even had my tattoos on it and everything like that. So I was just really blown away by it. Did they give you like a mini version that you could eat? I'm sure you can eat it at some point. I don't know if I'm gonna eat it because it's just kind of sitting there in that glass cage for I don't know how long. That and it'd be like eating your self might seem a little, a little, a little weird. A little off, but it's nice to look at. Gotta ask about the music. You just released a new album and the, it's called Delusions of Clarity. Yes. And I feel like I'm famous enough. Looking back, no, I gave it enough. Getting up off that pavement is tough when you know that you don't want to stay, but you stuck. Explain where that name came from. You know, I spent a lot of my life just confused and lost and just in a dark place, but somehow all those things came together and worked together to provide an avenue for me to walk into this life now where I feel like I'm, I see my purpose and you know why I'm here a lot more clearly than I did before. So it's like everything all worked together for a purpose, even though it was dark and it was, you know, it was bad. And some of that music was played during Monday Night Football and the warmups. Yes. That must have been the coolest thing, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool because I mean, it's like, I remember when I started doing music and it was, I really started focusing when I was out of the league and you know, people always make jokes about, you know, if you don't have a lot going and you start and you start rapping, everybody's like, oh, he's rapping now, like, but that was a place for me to really hone my confidence was in music and I could take that onto the field and to be able to then have my me play my music, it just doesn't seem real. It just doesn't really happen, so it's, I'm just enjoying it. There's a lot of rappers in the league. It definitely, I feel like, has become a trend and apparently you have some fellow rappers and musicians on your team that you decided to have join you on a track. How did you choose those guys? You gotta be balanced, bro. I don't even listen to music, music with words before this early. Uh, those are just my guys, you know. Uh, Foster, uh, probably one of the guys I hang out with the most, probably I'm closest to on the team, and 
Uh, I'm always sending him beats that I do, and he'll, uh, <laughs> he just has been rapping for I don't know how long in his own time, and he's like, yo, I got something for that. And I oh. was like, okay, well, come nice. on over. For the beat, or you already gave him like? I just sent him the beat, and oh. I told him, I was like, yeah, I'll probably go first and do the hook, and then you can have the second verse. And he just came right over to my house and did it in like one take, and didn't even like breathe or anything, and I was just like, it was very impressive. And Max as well, like Max writes in his spare time, and really enjoys music and I was like, hey man, we might as well might as well do this. We've been telling fans we were gonna do it for probably like two years now, so it was a it was an awesome moment. Who's better? They both their styles are <laughs> just they're different, but I love them both, man. I can't pick one over the other. That's a true good teammate. You've said that Las Vegas Darren is different than past Darren. How so? In the past, you know, when I was in Baltimore I was very anxious. I was very worried about what other people had to say. I was so caught up in the results of my performance, uh, but now, you know, I feel like I have a sense of calm because I don't have to be all things to all people, you know, as long as I feel good about, you know, what I'm doing and when I look in the mirror, uh, that's fine with me and I'm more, you know, focused on the process because who I'm becoming is more important than the results that may come from it. That wraps it up for this episode of Raiders Talk of the Nation. We'll be back next week with more moments you'll only see here with some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment. You never know what will happen. And in the meantime, be sure to check out more exclusive content online at Raiders.com or subscribe to the Raiders official YouTube page. I'm Christine Leahy and we'll see you soon.